Okay, so this basic math problem here has an opportunity for you to make two common errors. Now, a lot of you might be saying, no, no problem, I can do this without the aid of a calculator. Well, that will be awesome. Matter of fact, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But uh, probably a lot of you are going to make at least one error, maybe even two. But uh, if you're able to do this problem correct, that is fantastic. I'll show you the right answer to this problem in just one second, and then I'll walk through the solution step by step. And I'm going to highlight two common parts of a problem like this where a lot of students get confused. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so just to be clear, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have parentheses, one minus three, and parentheses squared divided by parentheses, three minus four, parentheses cubed times negative one squared. And again, we do not want to use our calculators. We just simply need to use that supercomputer located right here between your ears. That thing is so much better than any artificial intelligence out there. Matter of fact, that's actual intelligence, way better than AI. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the answer is four. All right, so if you got four, that is very, very awesome indeed. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional math expert in the area of order of operations and powers. So that's really kind of the main um, areas where students are going to make some mistakes. But uh, no problem, if you got this uh, uh, problem incorrect, please do not panic. What you want to do, okay, when you're doing any math problem is to make sure you write each step nice, uh, neatly, and clearly, okay? Now, why would you want to do that? Well, so you can kind of analyze, as I explain the actual solution, what part of the process you don't understand, okay? Now, if you got this problem wrong and your work is all sloppy, well, the reason why you got this problem wrong, the number one reason is because you're not showing your work properly. Okay, so a lot of you probably heard your math teacher say, hey, be neat, be clear. Listen, they're not just saying that. That's an absolute requirement to be successful in mathematics. So uh, if you did this problem incorrectly and you truly want to see if you know what you're doing here, go back and do it nice and slow, neat and organized. That way you can kind of follow along with me um, in the process where you may have went wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And the first thing we need, uh, need to discuss is the order of operations, okay? And of course, we have this lovely saying right here, PEMDAS. All of you uh, need to be familiar with this. This is super critical. And this is an acronym. These are letters that stand for something. And if you take a look at our prom here, we have all sorts of mathematical operations. So in math, an operator or a mathematical operation is things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even powers. It's things we can do with numbers. And you can see here we have subtraction, we have division, we have powers going on here, multiplication. We have all sorts of interesting things. And depending upon what order you do this problem, you will get different answers. Okay, now of course, uh, some of you probably did parts of this problem correctly. However, you just took a different uh, order, uh, causing you to get the wrong answer. Remember, when you have multiple different type of operations in a problem, you need to be thinking about PEMDAS. And this is the correct order of operations. And uh, basically, it's a checklist that goes from left to right. Now, I want to explain this here real quick, but uh, before I uh, tell you what these letters stand for, there is a nice little saying that goes along with this to help you remember this. This is, uh, I guess, what they would call a mnemonic, a uh, little uh, memory aid. It is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. People have been saying this for years and years and years. Probably my great uh, grandparents were saying this way back in the good old days. All right, so I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. 
All right, so uh, PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, what do these letters stand for? Let's go ahead and get into this right now. So P stands for parentheses. Okay, so if we see parentheses, which of course we have some, in this problem, that's where we need to put our focus first. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be parentheses like this. It could be brackets like this or these other type of brackets. Basically, we're talking about grouping symbols. Uh, these different type of symbols in mathematics group numbers together. So that's what you want to focus on. And by the way, too, if you had multiple parentheses in a problem, you would always start from the inside parentheses and kind of work your way out. Now, this uh, P part of the PEMDAS basically it says, hey, uh, when you have parentheses or grouping symbols, you need to focus on doing all the methods inside that until you're done with that uh, part of the um, process. Okay, let's move on to E. Now, E stands for exponents, but you can think of this as any powers, which, of course, we are going to have uh, powers in this problem. Uh, just to be clear, if I have 2 to the third power, this little 3 up here is called the exponent part of the power. The 2 is called the base, and this entire thing is a power. Okay, so the, the little 3, the number up in the uh, right-hand corner, that's called the exponent. So that's what that E stands for, but you can think of it as powers. Okay, so the next thing that confuses a lot of students is the M and D and A. And as a matter of fact, before you explain this, let's just go ahead and tell you what these stand for. M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. Okay, so if you were thinking that's what it is, that's in fact what those uh, letters stand for. But here's the deal, okay? It's not always multiplication, then division. That's not the way this checklist works. Now, it would, you know, logically, you would think that's the way it would work because we're going from left to right, but really these are groups, okay? So the way this works is actually is multiplication or division, whatever you see from left to right. So if we have multiplication, then division will do it this way because multiplication is um, on the left. But if we have division, then multiplication, we do it this way because division is on the left. It's multiplication or division, and A and S is addition or subtraction. Again, whatever we see first from left to right. Now, at this point, some of you might be saying, oh, I know where I made a mistake. And if you're thinking that, oh, you know where you went wrong, you should pause the problem and see if you can come up with the right answer. Okay, so this is a, a really kind of a big part of our, you know, what we need to know to manage this problem. But there's a few other sneaky little areas in this problem where um, students can make mistakes. As a matter of fact, I'll highlight the two common errors as we go through the actual steps. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing here is PEMDAS, right? So we're looking at our checklist. And we're going to ask ourselves, hey, are there any parentheses? Well, of course there are. We have 1 minus 3 and 3 minus 4. So we're going to have to address these two parts here. And uh, hopefully you're up to speed on your positive and negative numbers. So if you haven't learned this yet, no problem. You know, you'll certainly uh, learn this. You know, uh, this is kind of like uh, eh, middle school, high school mathematics. Uh, if you need help with basic math, positive, negative numbers, and lot, you know, those type of things, if you're kind of getting back into mathematics, I have a fantastic little mini course. It's kind of like a math boot camp. Uh, you'll find a link to it in the description below. It's called my Math Foundations course. It'll teach you all that basic math stuff um, and all the kind of important things that you need to know, fractions, positive, negative numbers, order of operations, all that kind of stuff before you move on to more exciting things like algebra. All right, so we got to figure out what 1 minus 3 is and 3 minus 4 is. And let's take a look at the answer right now. Okay, so 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Now, if you don't know why that is, uh, then, of course, you're going to need to um, review positive and negative numbers. By the way, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on all these topics. So 1 minus 3 is the same thing as 1 plus a negative 3. That's negative 2. And 3 minus 4 is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 4, and that is negative 1. Okay, so we're down to, um, we're still focusing on the parentheses part of PEMDAS. We took care of what was inside the parentheses, and although those there's parentheses, there's really nothing left to do inside of the parentheses. So effectively, this is our, um, our problem at this stage, and now we're ready to think about the next step. 
And that next step is going to be for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel so my facial expression could be very much like this. Matter of fact, I'll probably, my hair will stand up something like a 1985 Mohawk haircut. I'm so happy I don't see those things anymore, but they were pretty cool back in the good old day. And not to judge anyone that likes to wear their hair that way. Uh, I didn't, but I was always like, wow, that's very impressive. But uh, listen, uh, you know, being on YouTube, you know, for me or any other person that uh, puts their content out there, when you subscribe, that's a huge vote of confidence and it helps, uh, you know, gr to really grow your channel. Okay, for me, I'm trying to grow my channel so I can kind of grow my classroom. So if you don't mind, that would be awesome if you could subscribe and hit that notification button as well. If you are new to my channel, you'll find basic to advanced math. Uh, I have over 2,000 plus videos from, you know, again, basic math like what we're doing here to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. And that content is for you. Okay, so if you're struggling in math, check out my content. If you want my full courses, uh, just see the links in the video. Okay, back to the problem. So now uh, we are uh, done with the P part, right? Because there's nothing more to do with parentheses. So let's just move over and keep working our checklist. So E is what? Well, this is exponents or powers. So we do, do we have powers here? Well, actually we have three power situations, right? So we have negative two squared, negative one cubed, and uh, negative one squared here, but this is negative one. All the difference between these two, these are in parentheses. So here is kind of our first red flag where a lot of students are going to make a mistake. Not all of you, but a lot of you. So this is where a lot of common mistakes could occur. All right, so go ahead and tell me what the answer is. Negative two squared is, negative one cubed is, and this negative one squared is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. And I'll explain this common error here in just one second. Okay, here we go. So negative two squared means what? All right, well, notice that this negative two is in parentheses. So this expression means take this negative two and multiply it by itself. So negative two times negative two, a negative times a negative is positive four. Okay, that's what we have a positive four here. So what does negative one cubed mean? Well, again, this negative one is in parentheses, so we're, the uh, exponent is acting upon this entire thing here. So this is negative one times itself three times. This is negative one cubed. So negative one times negative one is a positive one. And a positive one times negative one, positive times negative is negative. So negative one cubed is negative. Okay, now here is uh, where I would say or is our first real opportunity to make a common error. So this is negative one squared right here. We need to figure this out. And the answer is negative one. Now, some of you might be like, what are you talking about, Mr. U2 Math Man? Uh, that should be a positive one because that's negative one times negative one. You're wrong. No, no, no. Uh, let me explain what's going on here. Again, a very common misunderstanding. An expression like this, negative one squared, this technically means the opposite of a positive one squared. Okay. Again, this negative one is not in parentheses. We're not squaring the negative one. We are squaring the positive one right here. Okay, this is you know this is basically the order of operations right here. So we're doing exponents before multiplication. Okay, so really this is like a negative one times a one squared. Very common mistake. So if this is kind of confusing, um, you know you're definitely not alone. But we need to kind of make sure you understand us, right? So this is the opposite of a positive one squared, which is a negative one. Okay, so this is probably the first common error. And now we are down to this problem right here. So we got four divided by negative one times negative one. And let's continue on. And let's take a look at our second common mistake, which hopefully uh, you picked up on as I explained the order of operations. Now, you know, if you did this problem, you know, obviously before, you know, I explained uh, PEMDAS, uh, a lot of students would be like, oh, we have to do multiplication first and then, um, you know, division. Now, in this particular case, it, you would have been okay. Okay, in other words, you would still made, you would have made a mistake 
uh, but you would actually end up with the wrong answer. You just kind of got a little bit lucky. So M and D is multiplication or division. So we need to do the division first, okay? Because that's what we see first from left to right. Now, if I did the multiplication, I'm like, well, it works out the same way. Negative times negative one, negative one times negative one is positive. Four divided by positive one, it works out. But we just got a little bit lucky in this particular problem. And that can happen in math, but we want to do this the right way uh, so we uh, you know, don't have to rely on luck. All right, so four divided by negative one, we have a positive being divided by a negative. Of course, the answer is going to be negative, all right? And again, if you're confused with this positive negative number, you know, working with integers and, and uh, real numbers, this is a huge part of uh, basic mathematics. And again, just, you know, identify what you don't know, okay? And just work on it. Math, math, learning math is nothing more than a series of skills. And all of these things, believe me, you can all uh, learn, all right? You can never, don't, never tell yourself, oh, no, that's too confusing. You can learn it. You just need great instruction, clear and understandable instruction. Then you got to put in the effort. All right, so four divided by negative one, that is going to be a negative four. And now we're down to this uh, last multiplication problem, negative four times negative one. Negative times negative is a positive, positive four. Again, we could have gotten a little lucky here by doing the uh, operation in um, the wrong order, and that can happen from time to time. But you don't want to be overconfident, be like, ah, I got it right anyways. Well, you know, if I change the numbers here, you would have gotten it wrong. Okay. Anyways, great job. Uh, even if you didn't understand this, if you identified where you need to, um, you know, work on or like, it's like, oh, I, I see what I did wrong. That's success. All right. You don't have to be, you're not going to get every single math problem right. I don't get uh, math problems right. And that's all relative. Okay. What you want to focus on is the process of learning math, which is you know, writing out all your steps nice and neat and clear, and then looking at your work and figuring out, hey, where is the problem? Oh, this is the problem right here. So this is what I need to correct. And then all of this now becomes correct. Okay. So, you know, until you start writing out your work in a structured way, you know, you're going to be dealing with chaos and we don't want to have chaos when we're dealing with math. We have enough things to be thinking about. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.